Ready or Not is the game that I hoped it would be, but feared it would not. It is the spiritual successor to SWAT 4, managing to be different enough to be its own thing, whilst still being similar enough to render SWAT 4 kind of redundant. A bit like SWAT 4 did with SWAT 3 before it. This isn't a bad thing. It's nice, for once, to see a new game actually rendering an old one I'm fond of obsolete. Put it this way, we used to play SWAT 4 every LAN party. Now we play Ready or Not. I'm going to assume you haven't played SWAT 4, because if you have then you're probably already enjoying Ready or Not. For the rest of you, imagine you're part of a SWAT team sent in to clear crack dens and schools filled with gun and knife wielding maniacs. But this isn't a game where you can just run in and shoot everybody. Each and every one of these monsters could kill you with a stray bullet. Some almost certainly will, unless you stack all the odds in your favour with all your grenades and planning and shields. Your best bet is to shoot everyone on sight. But if you shoot everyone on sight then you risk killing innocents. You'll mistake flashing phones for flashing guns and you'll accidentally shoot human shields instead of the terrorists holding them. Ready or Not is filled with split second decisions and it'll be a long time before you don't make some mistakes. There's one guy, for instance, who you're meant to arrest, but he has a powerful badass revolver that he isn't afraid to use. That's fine, you might think. Just hold up a shield and you'll be safe. Nope, he'll just shoot himself with it, failing the mission. You'd have been better off going in with a taser. Ready or Not's levels range from quite small to being so big you'll rarely make it to the far side of them, and the enemies range from being quite dangerous to being pure aimbot. It's exhilarating to be shot at by a junkie only for them to miss every shot as they skip across the room in a dressing gown. It's not so fun to encounter a hardened maniac who will zap you before you even turn the corner and who has his penis exposed. This one time in single player I coordinated an attack on his house, where one team went upstairs, the other downstairs, and at the same time they kicked the doors open to take them all by surprise. All four of my teammates immediately died from the booby trapped doors exploding, leaving me alone to contend with three hardened maniacs. And the game's scoring system is unforgiving. There's an elusive S plus score, though an excellent run can still sometimes yield just an A or a B rating. Make the slightest mistake in this game and you'll be given some terrible score. This game is still new and exciting enough to me that I don't really care what I get so long as I've actually managed to survive the level. These things can be brutal, but these scores will keep us coming back for years to come as we perfect our entries and gradually master this game. For the game's official 1.0 release the other month, they added a single player campaign where you recruit very capable, uniquely perked and emotionally fragile AI officers to go on the missions with you. And as they witness terrible things, their mental state degrades and you have to send them on breaks and stuff like that. Honestly, I didn't care too much for that micromanagement. I thought I would. I hate losing people in a game like XCOM for instance, but in this game I expect collateral and beyond a unique perk these officers all fill the same role to me. I just don't expect to be able to familiarise myself with anyone for long enough to actually care. I don't care too much for the innocents in this game either. I mean I do, but not enough to not shoot them if I'm looking for a quick dopamine release in multiplayer. Ready or Not's problem is that it's just too fun to shoot at stuff. You hit an artery and blood pours out of that person as they flail about for a while before collapsing to the floor. You shoot somebody else and they're on the floor screaming for what seems like minutes. The voice actors had a lot of fun in this game. Contact. Uh, Drop me uh, the light. Nothing. When presented with a difficult room, you can charge in and risk it in an exhilarating 5 second run and gun, or you can spend 2 minutes preparing with opti ones, synchronised door stacks, maybe a few door wedges, synchronised explosions and grenades thrown in everywhere, and you might still get shot in the face before you can even enter the doorway. Granted, the problem is mostly with me. I play alone or with a single friend and some of these missions really do require a larger team of people if you want to do it properly. But it's hard work to do this game properly, especially after you've suffered a few retries already. I didn't have the same problem in SWAT 4, where I quite enjoyed playing it non-lethally, taking my time to prepare at every door I encountered and ensuring a perfect score by shooting enemies with beanbags and pepper balls instead of things that can actually kill them. Because take your time in SWAT 4 and do everything perfectly and you can almost guarantee you'll clear the next room without any casualties. Ready or not is not so forgiving, nor is it so consistent. Some of its enemies are unfairly good. Others just randomly open a door when you least expect it, or they'll begin wildly sprinting about the level and will run up behind you in 5 minutes time, or they'll shoot you through the tiniest gap in a wall somewhere. Add to this your grenade's erratic effectiveness and the fact a single bullet can still kill you even if you're wearing all the armour and shields in the world, and Ready or Not can be a thoroughly infuriating experience. It's a gritty game, in a good way. The trailers made it out to be even more depraved than SWAT 4's seedy crack dens and illegal prostitution rings were and the game has well and truly lived up to that. Every room in this game is lavishly detailed with custom made details and assets and it's truly beautiful how unique each and every place and resident in this game looks. 
They just haven't missed a beat with all the cults and fairies running about everywhere. There's that nightclub from John Wick, with piles of dead bodies all over the place, and people with suicide vests who will explode if you accidentally shoot them. They even have a school shooting level, though it's set in a college and there aren't children everywhere or anything like that. Though there are children in this game that you can shoot, which is unusual to see in an unmodded game. There's also a crate full of naked women at one point. Ready or Not's developers do have their limits, but their limits are less strict than most games dare to be. Your loadout is diverse, and it's difficult to tell the difference between some of the weapons in this game, let alone some of the attachments you can add to them. Some of the guns definitely take a few more shots to take an enemy down than others, but the more powerful ones tend to be longer so you can't use them so easily in confined spaces and so on. It's cleverly balanced in that regard. You have different armor tiers that you can use, and even different material types for the plates that you put in them. Like hell, I can feel the difference. I just know you'll run slowly regardless of what you pick. And like I said, you can wear all the armor and a single shot can still kill you. This game doesn't care whether you're ready or not. Now this game's been in a good state for years already, if I'm honest. I've been playing it since the very beginning, when many of the levels were just blank, untextured rooms. And it bode well that it was still incredibly enjoyable to play it back then. And even if they stopped developing this game today, it's already a decent experience with enough levels and challenges to be worthy of being sold at full price. But of course, I hope they continue to add to it for many years to come. SWAT 4 has done us well until now, but it was sad to see that game to be dead and even unobtainable for a while. That's just what happens with an old game, I guess. But Ready or Not is new, it's got a dedicated player base and a dedicated development team, and the future for the game looks bright. My number one feature request is stealth. Right now, the moment you fire your first shot, every enemy in the level is seemingly on full alert forevermore. At risk of showing my age, I think they should add back that fast and slow mechanic from SWAT 3, which let you slow it all down again after a fight, so you could creep onto the next area for an added surprise bonus where enemies would all take a moment longer to react to you kicking in the door. I'm saying this based on how the game feels, it could very well be that there is some kind of stealth mechanic right now, but it doesn't feel right just yet. They've already fixed a few of the things that were wrong with this game in early access. The enemy's reflexes for instance, they used to shoot you through walls and immediately spin around and headshot you, and for the most part that sort of stuff has been fixed, but there are still some odd situations where, if this was Counter Strike, I would accuse these enemies of cheating. It's been wonderful to see them shake up the unfun levels so dramatically. The port level for instance was very unfun, now it seems to have been entirely redone. I also want one or two more short missions. One where there's a lone gunman in a small house full of innocence, because it's always fun to warm up on such a level at a LAN party. The petrol station is the closest this game has to that, and even that's quite extensive. I'd also like a return of the fast food restaurant, but what made it fun was that it contained lots of low skilled enemies to shoot. It was fun to have such a small level with enough targets that everyone had a chance to shoot something. I also want them to make the sniper scope not be completely pointless, and let's have the option for AI teammates in multiplayer to aid you in the more challenging missions, and make it so you can take over control of them should you die in the mission. So yeah, Ready or Not is my current gaming guilty pleasure, made by what feels like all the same talented and passionate people who made SWAT 4. I am very relieved that this game did not disappoint.